And thank you for this opportunity to talk to you about the importance of study in pharmacy and pharmaceutical science at Monash University, Australia's biggest university and one of the group of eight, so the top eight universities in Australia. My name is Georgina Gibson and I will be hosting this session along with special guests, Rena, Jessica and Astra, who are all current pharmacy and pharmaceutical science students. So following the formal presentation, which will take about 40 minutes, we will welcome your questions. So before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we are meeting on today, the Wurundjeri people. Please take a moment to consider whose, whose lands you are on today and remember that sovereignty was never ceded. As a university that encourages young people in their passion for medicines and science, we know that the pursuit of scientific knowledge in Australia has a history that is millennia old. We have a deep respect and appreciation for Australia's first scientists, the First Nations people, and what their knowledge continues to contribute to our lives. I would like to pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging, and extend this respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today, for they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture and hopes of Australia. So why consider studying pharmacy or pharmaceutical science? Who would be a good fit for these programs and would you be a good fit? So you would be a good fit if you are comfortable with maths, chemistry or biology, want to work in healthcare, are interested in treatments and cures for disease, want to work in an industry that is essential and evolving, want to study a course with clear graduate direction and want to help people and make a difference to society. So these are all sort of things that if you hold these areas within you, like pharmacy, pharmaceutical science is definitely for you. So what is the difference? And this is a common question that we do get, the difference between pharmacy and pharmaceutical science. So a pharmacist is a health professional who prepares and dispenses medications. They communicate with patients and the broader healthcare team. So doctors, nurses, and other allied health professionals. Any place there is medicine, you'll find a pharmacist. In your degree, you spend time in a lab, but not necessarily in a biomedical or analytical lab. So placements are in community pharmacies and hospitals. And you have to like people and working in healthcare settings such as hospitals, community pharmacies and areas of public health. I know that the Australian government now is looking to um, broaden the responsibilities of pharmacists and we know that during COVID they were giving out vaccinations. So I feel, so the, the role of the pharmacist is changing and evolving and definitely growing. A pharmaceutical scientist, on the other hand, is engaged in drug design and development and is advancing the science. You work across the drug discovery pipeline in research teams, at pharmaceutical institutes, hospitals and universities. So in your degree, there is a lot of lab work and placements are in research labs at universities, hospitals and pharma institutes. You have to like sitting in the lab and mucking around with things, right? So conducting lots of experiments. So Monash has a stellar reputation in Australia and around the world for pharmacy and pharmacology. Over the last five years, we have consistently been ranked within the top three universities globally in this space and retain our long held position as Australia's and Asia, the Asia Pacific's number one university for pharmacy and pharmacology. So our consistently high ranking is a powerful recognition of our talented academic research and professional staff, as well as the reputation of our undergraduate and postgraduate students. We're pretty chuffed to be up there with Harvard and Oxford at number two. And last year, you may have already heard we were number one. So in, in that group of three, which is very exciting. So we're on a mission to make healthcare better 
It's why we focus on small group learning that allows you to receive individual attention from some of the world's leading educators. It's why we focus on equipping you with not just the most up-to-date knowledge, but also with the skills you need to put that knowledge into practice. And it's why our undergraduate degrees offer extensive experiential opportunities so you can integrate what you've learned in the classroom with what goes on. So we focus on equipping you with not just the most up-to-date knowledge, but also the skills you need to put that knowledge into practice. Um, so our undergraduate degrees offer extensive, extensive experiential opportunities so you can integrate what you've learned in the classroom with what goes on in the wider world. And you can see in this slide, uh, we're showing you our pillars of education. So our commitment to you, right? We want your learning to be applied, relevant, fun and memorable. We're offering you active learning in large and small groups where you're encouraged to interact with your peers and teachers. This can be a little bit, you know, daunting in the beginning, but you do get used to it and you find um, how beneficial it is to you. And you'll hear our students talk a little bit about that later. We also teach you employability skills, how to write a resume, how to interview, how to present yourself, really important things. And experi experiential learning in a way, in the way of hands-on activities and placements and skills coaching, where we coach you to succeed. So you'll be in small groups with a teacher who'll be your skills coach for the semester. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, our students will tell you a little bit more about their experience later. Okay. So where are we? So we're in Parkville, so at Monash Parkville, we are a close-knit community of students and staff where everyone speaks the language of chemistry. We have about 2,000 students on campus there. The campus is also part of the world-renowned Melbourne Biotech Precinct, a physical precinct that contains a large number of institutions, organisations and industries, all working together to further outcomes in biomedical research. In fact, you might, may or may not know this, uh, Victoria is the heart of Australia's pharmaceutical sector, which is growing rapidly, <clears throat> contributing more than $2.2 billion in exports. So globally, pharmaceuticals is a growth sector with high job prospects. So it's a really great place to be. So we're located in Melbourne's inner north, so the leafy green suburb of Parkville. Um, the campus is very accessible by transport, so tram and train. Uh, there's cheap parking at the zoo, I think it's about $2 a day. Um, and uh, if you're from interstate or an international student, you're advised to look for accommodation in the Parkville area or in the Melbourne CBD. Now we don't actually have on campus um, accommodation at Parkville, we do at Clayton, um, but yeah, we, it's probably better that you live in Parkville uh, or, or the Melbourne CBD. Um, so you can see from that slide there, we are close to uh, the Melbourne Zoo and Brunswick and also Carlton. Um, and we're what we call a single purpose campus. So it means that everyone at Parkville is studying pharmacy or pharmaceutical science. Unlike say our Clayton campus, which is our biggest campus, where students um, are, you know, are studying arts and business and engineering um, and medicine and science and IT. So it, it's a much more um, diverse campus in, in what they teach. Um, the beauty of a single purpose campus is that you're moving from class to class with the same people, which means you're making friends very quickly from day one, right? So you're all connected. Um, and you're also getting a peer mentor from day one as well, which I think is really important to sort of help you navigate that first year. We have dedicated clubs and societies, and you're very welcome to join the sports clubs at the University of Melbourne. So they welcome our students because uh, we're quite small. So there's not that much space to do all the sporting activities there. And um, we do have 24 seven security as well. All right, let's talk about the degrees. Um, so as I mentioned, pharmacy is a health profession. So you're a health professional and you are the custodian of medicines, right? You're the, you're the medicines expert. You've 
we've all been to a pharmacy and we've spoken to the pharmacist. I know that I'm always amazed by the knowledge that a pharmacist holds about medicines uh, and how to use it and how they interact with other medications. Really important stuff. Because if you take the wrong combination of medicine, you know it can sometimes lead to death and we never want that situation. Um, so it mentions there that medicines come in all forms, uh, in tablets, capsules, injections, lozenges, lots of different things, patches. Um, and, and also the way it's administered um, is changing as well. So wearable devices, video games, and now different types of therapies. Um, job prospects are bright, for sure. Uh, so in Australia, we have an ageing population combined with more and more people living with chronic health conditions. So it means that health professionals are in constant demand. The number of job ads for pharmacists has grown exponentially in recent years. Uh, and a study led by Monash actually concluded that Australia could actually face a pharmacist shortage. And this is why pharmacy is on the temporary skilled migration list. So jobs in the pharmacy sector are in strong demand. And, and you can see the statistic there, pharmacy graduates almost universally get jobs straight out of university with 95% in full-time employment shortly after graduating. So if you're looking to become a healthcare professional within a highly in-demand profession and love the idea of making a true difference to people's lives, then a career as a pharmacist might be for you. This next slide gives you um, an idea of where else pharmacists work. So we think of pharmacists in retail, uh, in you know, your local chemist, uh, we think of them in, in hospitals as well, but also you can be part of the public healthcare team. So you can also work um, for government organisations and non-government organisations. Also, maybe you'll stay in academia, you'll you know, continue on to teach. So, um, so lots of different options there. So in Australia, it typically takes a minimum of five years to become a registered pharmacist. Um, and you'll see there, um, so the top pathway, uh, we've got a Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours and a Master of Pharmacy. Now the Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours, the four year degree is an option, right? So you can come straight into that, or you can come into our double degree of Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours and Master of Pharmacy, right? So where, which does include your internship. Yeah, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that. So um, a few years ago, we did launch this combined double degree. Uh, and most other pharmacy programs in Australia offer you um, the four year program, and then you need to go on to your paid internship. Okay, so that's what gives you uh, the skills you need for pre-registration and then you go on to complete your um, your exam. So the intern training program is an essential part of becoming a pharmacist in Australia. So if you're in the Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours and Master of Pharmacy, you would do your first four years and then in your master's year. Now a master's, if you don't already know, is a higher qualification as well. So the intern training program, which you have to do as part of your um, pathway to registration is part of that master's year. So you're in um, full-time employment. Um, sorry, when I say full-time, you're doing about 40 weeks of the year in a, in a pharmacy and it's supervised um, learning that you have, um, might be in a retail pharmacy or it might be in a hospital and, um, so you are paid for that year, but you're also doing a little bit of study back at Monash as well. And that's the intern foundation program, which, which helps to prepare you for your exams, which can be quite tough. Okay, so it is um, a bit of research and um, we'll get one of, um, we'll get Rena to talk about um, that, that aspect a little bit later. Whilst you're in your intern training program, you'll earn about $1,000 a week. It does vary and it is pro rata. So penalties can apply as well. <clears throat> All right, let's see what they, the actual degree looks like. So here you've got your Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours degree. So that's the four year program. It is skill focused. So you'll be doing lots of role plays. Um, you're working on communication, teamwork, problem solving, lots of critical thinking, and you get lots of practice on placements. And Monash finds 
your uh, placements for you. Now, your intern training program, that's something you find yourself, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Your workload tends to be, like it does vary, like 30, maybe 30 to 60 hours a week. Um, and that includes self-study, interactive lectures, workshops, and placements. Your placements do start from first year. They are more observational in first and second year. And then you're, you're really getting, um, get, you know, into the swing of it by third year, um, where they do account for a lot of your, uh, your year there. So, if you do start decide that you're going to come into the four year program, so Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours, and you do then later want to enrol in the Master of Pharmacy with us at Monash, you can do so in third year or earlier, but you can't do it after third year. So that's something to consider as well. I mean, the, the other thing is, if you came into the double degree, you can always take an early exit uh, and come out with a Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours if you don't want to continue on with Masters. If you are thinking of using pharmacy as a pathway to medicine, because it is a pathway, so Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours, you do need to have an overall average of 70% by the end of your fourth year. So looking at the double degree, so you'll see there's an extra year added at the end um, and includes your um, applied pharmacy practice, foundation practice, and this is giving you um, more skills, more knowledge to be better at your exams. And you also have got your paid internship. <clears throat> so a little bit more about the intern training program. So it is part of the registration requirement, remember, to become a pharmacist. It is supervised. It will go for 40 to 48 weeks. It does, it does depend on where you go. Uh, you are paid by your employer. So about a thousand a week pro rata, which is about, I think, $50,000 a year. Again, pro rata, and it could be more or less in some places, probably not less. Um, and it's secured by you. And this is not difficult because you are in demand, right? As an intern pharmacist, you are definitely in demand. Um, and I've seen ads already around campus where pharmacies are looking for an intern. Um, you'll then go on to sit registration exams and then you become a registered pharmacist, okay? Um, what more did I want to tell you about that? Mm -hmm. I think we're okay there. Um, so this is just sort of, um, just to give you an idea, we had, you know, 199 students in the Master of Pharmacy this year and they've all found their placements, uh, 80 are in hospital internships and 119 are in community internships. So no problem with anyone finding an internship. Okay, so remember, so I said it's provisional registration as pharmacist, then you sit your exams and get full registration, you're able to practice. Okay, um, the other program I wanted to mention was the um, Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours Master of Pharmacy Scholars Program. This is a, if you're applying through VTAC, this is a, it has got its own VTAC code uh, and you do need, uh, the ATAR is about 98 for this program where you'll get a $6,000 scholarship uh, per year and you're invited to academic seminars and you'll get to um, go to a function with the Dean. So pharmacy is a global profession and we want our students to experience that in their degree. International opportunities are available to, so you can go on exchange to Monash Malaysia. We also teach pharmacy in Malaysia at our Malaysia. Uh, we have a campus in Malaysia uh, in Sunway. Um, and you'll, so when you go, um, or you could go to one of our Farm Alliance partners, so the University of North Carolina or University College London. I know that we already have five students from the University of North Carolina with us this year, and we are sending five students there as well. And we're sending a student also to Monash, Malaysia, which is exciting. So with um, North Carolina and University College London, you do a six week research project, okay? Uh, so that's an option for you. Um, not compulsory, but it, it is an option if you wanna have that um, uh, international experience or an additional international experience. So looking at both degrees side by side, so you just get an idea of how they differ. You'll see that 
Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours is four years and the double degree with the master's program is five years, both taught at Parkville. Um, semester one entry only, so we don't have a mid-year entry. Um, the Dean's Scholars program only applies to the double degree of the bachelor's and master's. Um, and with the Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours, you can move into the master's degree in, in second th or third year, and you do need to be in good academic standing. So that means that you need to be passing. Um, with, if you're in the double degree and you don't want to see it through, you can exit early with a Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours. Um, and then if you're coming into the programs from uh, an external, um, so an, another institution, um, you need a 70% average to come into the program. Looking at the entry requirements, remember the ATAR does differ a little bit year to year. Um, so this year our ATAR either stayed the same or went up one or two points. Um, and you'll see that every course there has a different ATAR. So the double degree has 88, well, was 88, um, 10 this year. Uh, that should say 2023, apologies. Um, the Scholars Program was 98 and the Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours was 88.05. Prerequisites are English, so you need 25 or 27 in EAL. Uh, you need maths, you need so high level maths, so methods or specialists with at least a 25 and chemistry. So at least a 25 in, um, in units three and four chemistry. There's also there you'll see the Monash Guarantee. So the Monash Guarantee ATAR recognises, um, you know, that some, some people haven't had an easy year, things have happened. Um, so uh, you do get to come in with a lower ATAR, except for the Scholars Program, it doesn't apply. Um, so to qualify, so you may be eligible and you can also look at this online. You might have experienced financial disadvantage. You might live in a low socioeconomic area. You might recognize, um, identify as an Indigenous Australian or attend an, uh, an underrepresented school. So they're the eligibility criteria there for the Monash Guarantee. So keeping on with pharmacy, I want to talk to you a little bit about graduate entry pharmacy. So graduate entry pharmacy means that you have completed a degree somewhere else and that you come into the th third year of the Bachelor of Pharmacy and Master of Pharmacy program. Okay, so what degree do you, do you need to have done? So you need to have done either a Bachelor of Biomedicine, a Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science, or a Bachelor of Science. So there's more to it than just the title of the degree that you're in. You do need to have met certain criteria and you'll see there in sort of the gray notes, and this is all on our website, by the way, um, that you need to have, you know, studied physiology um, and you need to have the chemistry, the high level mass and the English. Um, and with for physiology, you'll see some recommended uh, units or subjects um, that we want you to cover. OK, so when you if you apply to come into third year, we will look at your transcript and make sure you meet all the requirements. <clears throat> um, you do need a 70% average as well in your prior degree. So that's your prior completed degree uh, to come into third year. Um, and uh, what did I wanna tell you about that? Oh, sorry, the bridge, yeah. So you'll do need to do a bridging program over the summer before you start your third year. So you, it's like, you know, sort of a catch up sort of session. And that's sort of uh, highlighted here in the slide. You'll see you've got your, let's say you came in with a Bachelor of Science, that's your prior degree. Um, and you've met all the other criteria. So you do a, a summer program. It's a six week program, it's called Bridge to Practice. And then you continue a little bit with that Bridge to Practice in your semester one. So you're overloading just a little bit and then continue in um, with third year, fourth, and then your master's year. Here's another diagram which shows it um, a little bit clearer. So your, your prior degree, so biomed science, pharmaceutical science, your summer program, and then into third year. So what you're going to end up with is say a Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Pharmacy honours and a Master of Pharmacy. So you're gonna actually have three degrees by the end of it. So this might suit someone who uh, didn't meet the entry requirements to get into our pharmacy program. So you might not have taken chemistry 
uh, or high level maths. So if you go into the Bachelor of, of Science, for example, at Monash, you can pick up chemistry in, in science um, and also maths as well. All right, moving on to pharmaceutical science. Um, so what is pharmaceutical science? Why does it matter? So a degree in pharmaceutical science, it will equip you for an exciting and diverse career, enabling you to make a genuine impact um, on human health and well-being. So you're the one who's designing the medications, right? So designing them, um, improving existing ones, um, you know, so your understanding of, you know, the interplay between chemistry and biology will, will set you apart. So you'll be taught by our fabulous uh, renowned scientists and you will be at the forefront of tackling global health challenges. And we know there are many of them. So from them, you'll learn what it takes to invent, develop and approve a new medicine to improve health outcomes in Australia and in the world. So you'll get definitely get the hands-on experience working in a lab and working with industry standard equipment. Um, you know, you'll be, <clears throat> when, you, when you do accept your first job after graduating, you'll hit the ground running. You'll be that um, well-versed in what you're doing. We do have a long-standing relationship with lots of industry partners, lots of employers, um, and they will come looking for you as well. Okay, so we, we have an employability fair. In fact, it's happening next month um, where employers come on and it's a virtual sort of expo and they talk to our students, do like mini interviews, um, you know, and look for uh, people to employ. It's a really exciting time. <clears throat> So career opportunities, uh, lots, okay. Um, we know that we're, you know, facing urgent health challenges all the time. Pharmaceutical science play an important and central role in helping to solve the problems, um, the imminent problems over the next decade and, and beyond. So I did mention earlier that Victoria is a global hub for biomedical research and medical technology and for pharmaceutical man manufacturing, okay. Um, so, you know, we, with one of the, you know, the world's largest life science clusters, so Victoria's pharmaceutical industry is highly sought after on a global scale. So companies such as CSL, Pfizer, Novartis, Merck, Bristol Myers uh, are located in Victoria. So there's a strong demand for biomedical and pharmaceutical graduates in the state. Um, and I mentioned the drug discovery pipeline before. So a career in pharmaceutical science can take you in a number of directions. So during the course, you'll have the opportunity to align your interests with particular aspects of the drug discovery pipeline. So you might be attracted to drug discovery biology. And this is about gaining an understanding of what causes different types of diseases and how current medicines work at a molecular level to treat them. You'll get hands-on experience designing experiments to identify and test new biological targets for the development of novel drugs. Or you might be drawn into medicinal chemistry. So this represents the intersection of biology and chemistry and involves the development of potential pharmaceutical compounds from conception excuse me, from conception through to their clinical use. So you'll study how drugs work, how they're designed and made. So by applying the principles and techniques of organic chemistry, medicinal chemists discover and develop compounds that prevent, treat and cure disease. There's also formulation science, okay? So this enables you to understand which the principles of designing pharmaceutical products and how the medicines are absorbed and travel around the body to the site of action. Okay, so drawing on techniques used in the pharmaceutical industry, you'll learn how to formulate chemical products in a wide range of applications, such as consumer products like cosmetics, paints and food. Um, so yeah, but that's not, that's only half the story. So how does the medicine end up in the pharmacy? And you do learn all about that, right? So um, from, you know, the product team creates the design and branding around the product. You've got sales and business development, you've got manufacturing, you've got logistics. So how's it going to be sent around um, before it moves on to become a product to be sold? Okay, so really excited. So you get to see the whole 
journey. So looking at the course structure, so course structure, you've got your Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science um, and your Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science Advanced Honours as well. So a three and four year program. Um, so if you wanted to, um, so it depends on sort of, you know, what you want to do. Some students want to come in, complete a three year degree and then go and work straight away. So a Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science might suit you there. Um, so yeah, you, you know, move into industries such as skincare or cosmetics, chemicals, food manufacturing, um, to name a few. Or you might, you know, be, I guess, interested in uh, doing some research. So honours is your research year. Uh, so you could come into the Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science Advanced Honours. And the third year gives you that extended placement, right, in either research or industry. So it'll give you the skills and independence to conduct a substantial research project in your fourth year. Uh, and this then allows you to move on to a PhD if you want to do that. Okay, it gives you a taste of research. Um, and then to know whether that's your thing or not. Some people already know whether it's their thing or not. Another option is the double degree of chemical engineering and pharmaceutical science. Uh, and Astra, who's with us tonight, one of our students is in that double degree um, and will tell you more about it. So you'll learn how to invent and test new products such as pharmaceuticals, food and cosmetics. And you'll also have the know-how on how to manage the product process beyond the lab stage, right? So it allows you to graduate as a qualified engineer capable of covering the, the full spectrum of pharmaceutical product design and production uh, processes. So pharmaceutical engineers work in all aspects of, of the design and production process from experimenting with innovative formulations to manufacturing commercialized products. So that's a, definitely another option for you. Um, you'll get hands-on experience um, with the, the, what we call the NMR machine, the nuclear magnetic resonance machine, uh, high performance liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry and cell culture. Um, where can you go on placement? You know, any of, of these um, companies that you see on the screen, um, we have an elective in the course where we get uh, into some industries come out and they pitch their um, projects to our students, right? And you work in teams. So let's say ASAP came out and they said, right, we, want, we need three different products created. Um, so you're in teams. So you, you, you and your student group, they give you all, all the equipment that you need, the products, the packaging, and you go away with your team and you create the product that they're looking for. So ASAP might be wanting a product that is, um, makes your skin glow, um, you know, survives, you know, really hot temperatures, uh, is a certain colour. So really exciting things like that is um, one thing you do. So recently we had um, uh, a luxury cosmetics brand, Rationale, on campus, as well as Dulux Paints came to pitch their project. So that is an elective you can take in pharmaceutical science in your degree um, and get that um, real industry experience. So again, focusing on skills. So, you know, your problem solving, critical thinking, um, your communication, teamwork skills, this is all happening throughout your degree. And of course, definitely your lab skills um, are a big feature. Looking at all the degrees side by side, so the three options with pharmaceutical science, um, all taught at Parkville, uh, farm side, the pharmaceutical science degree, three years. The advanced honours option is four years. Uh, and the engineering pharmaceutical science double degree is a five year program. Okay. Remember, in a double degree, you're not overloading. Um, you're doing, uh, in this case, you're doing one year in Parkville and one year at our Clayton campus where engineering is taught. So you alternate. So Parkville, Clayton, Parkville, Clayton, Clayton is how that degree works. Semester one entry only for all programs. The only program here that attracts the Dean Scholars Program is the Advanced Honours Year, uh, sorry, uh, degree. Uh, and there is credit for prior learning. So if you're coming in um, from another course, we do consider um, advanced standing. And, and also you need to, if you are coming in from another degree somewhere else uh, or within Monash, you do need a 60% average. 
I that was a scholars program. It's the same program except for pharmaceutical science. Uh, entry requirements. Uh, you've got, uh, again, different ATARs, so the three-year degree, about 83, and I guess, sorry, it should say 2023 indicative ATAR. Um, the advanced honours program a bit higher, so about 88. The, um, the scholars program, 98, and engineering pharmacy double degree, sitting around close to 86 there. And again, the Monash guarantee is an option for you. Entry requirements. Um, are the same as they are with pharmacy. So you need English, high level maths and chemistry. Uh, I want to talk to you about a little bit about the Master of Pharmaceutical Science. So just a couple of slides here. It, remember the master's degree is a higher level degree. So it's a higher qualification. So you can't go from high school to a master's. You do have to go via a bachelor's degree. Uh, it is our newest degree. It started last year. And um, yeah, it's a coursework masters and it's attracted really strong demand already we're quite impressed uh, with um, our enrollment numbers with this degree so it aims to fill the skill gaps in the pharmaceutical sector and allied industries and it's been designed in consultation with major employers and research leaders to give students the industry skills that are in demand so studies in this two-year master's degree will involve mRNA and vaccine manufacturing, cutting edge techniques, clinical trials, navigating regulation, plus an extended placement in industry or a research lab. So by the end, you'll be prepared to work in executive level careers such as biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, food and beverage, cosmetics and paints and coatings. So just a quick slide there to show you that it's a two year program um, and what you'll be learning with the entry requirements. Um, um, so you can come, sorry, so there's different levels you can come in. So you can come in with, with credit. So um, if you're coming in with a Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Biomed or Engineering Honours, um, you come into the two-year program. If you're coming in with a Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science, you can come into the one-and-a-half-year program. And if you're coming into the Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science Honours or um, the Bachelor of Pharmacy and Engineering Double with a 70% average, um, you'll be considered for the one-year program. Finally, um, the exciting part of the night, our students. So I'm going to hand it over to our fabulous students, starting with Rena, uh, so that, uh, who's in a Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours Master of Pharmacy. And then we'll hear from Jessica, who's in a Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science Advanced Honours. And then we'll hear from Astra, who's in a Bachelor of Engineering Honours and Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science. So they're in third or fourth year and they'll tell you um, themselves. So handing it over to you, Rena. thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Rena. I'm in third year pharmacy. Um, so I chose pharmacy because I really enjoyed chemistry and biology in high school. And I was really interested in working in healthcare. And I thought that pharmacy, you get to learn about medicines and the safe and effective use of them. And I found that really interesting. Um, so I just talk about a few points that I really enjoy about pharmacy. Um, so as you know, pharmacists play a crucial role in primary health care, as you can tell from like uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so at uni, um, we learned to counsel a lot of medications and making sure that patients know how to take them. So like, you know, what the medications for, when to take them, how to take them. And you get to... Um, uh, apply that knowledge um, at placements which you're exposed through um, which you're exposed to from first year all the way until your fourth year and then into your internship um, so you get to experience hospital pharmacy and community pharmacy and kind of see like which you're interested in um, and another main thing that I really like about pharmacy is that you get to um, work in a pharmacy while you're studying um, the degree, which helps you to gain experience and also apply the knowledge that um, you are learning, um, basically, as you're studying it. 
Are you finished, yeah. Rena? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. okay. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit of, about how you sort of, um, from high school, what your thinking was and, and how you sort of chose it? Your, did you come straight out of high school? Um, yes. Um, yeah, so okay. I'm an interstate student. Um, so I'm from Queensland. And um, I think, wait, sorry, what was the question? Yeah, so how did you sort of, um, what was sort of your thinking around what you were going to choose out of high school? Like, so you're also interstate, which has a really interesting element as well. Um, yeah, how did you decide that you were going to um, go apply for a Bachelor of Pharmacy, Master of Pharmacy at Monash? Um, so I compared a lot of universities across Australia um, that offer pharmacy and I found that Monash had a really good reputation and I think when I attended the same webinar back in maybe grade 10, I found that it had a really good feel and I really liked how the campus was very, um, there was a very uh, like tight and close knit community. Um, and and um, I found that the lectures gave a lot of, um, uh, Sorry, I lost my plot. That's, that's okay. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's not, that's fine. It's, excuse me, I'm losing my voice now. You have to keep talking. <laughs> um, so, oh, oh gosh, I forgot what I was talking about. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed chemistry and biology and um, pharmacy just sounded like a good option for me because it was like a combination of both. And uh, yeah. Terrific. Thanks, Rena. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry to put you on the spot. Okay, we'll um, now go on to Jessica. So Jessica's in the FarmSite Advanced Honours Program. Thanks, Jessica. Sure. Um, do you mind if I share my screen? Because I do have like a little slide. Yep, I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, and you can share. Yep. Can you see my screen? Uh, um, I can, but I'm not sure. Is it? Uh, I can see it. Yes, I think you can go. Yeah, sure. Um, so, hi everyone. My name is Jessica, and um, it's an honor to be here sharing my experience as a Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science Advanced Honor student. So, I am an international student from Shanghai, China, and I came to Melbourne in 2016. So, I spent my year nine to year 12 at Brentwood Secondary College, and through taking a diverse range of subjects, so I did maths, sports, food tech, history, and a lot of others. And then I finally found my true passion, which is science. So, I just loved discovering like the meticulous mechanism between uh, behind each phenomenon and how they all connect to each other so I also aspire to use my knowledge to benefit others um, in one way or another so I was contemplating between physiotherapy and pharmaceutical science when I was choosing my uni um, degree and then I was hoping for a more diverse range of opportunities so instead of sticking to one profession <clears throat> I was really open to more opportunities so um, and that is just what farms I can do so there are people graduating from our degree that go into food pharma companies research institutes um, personal care companies and many others and also during my two years at Monash one highlight of the degree is the practical experience we gained so instead of having theories thrown at us we were given an average four hours a week for hands-on lab work so um, I now have the lab skills associated with synthesis of molecules bacteria cultures and chromatography and the most recent one ones being the cream that I made um, just last week. So, and that leads to another aspect of farms that I really appreciate, which is how the curriculum focuses on employability. So personally, through this specific formulation science unit, it provides me with the insight and knowledge that will guide me into my dream industry, which is the cosmetics and skincare industry. And starting in July, because I am doing an advanced honors degree, I will also be having eight weeks of placement, where I will spend four weeks in research and four weeks in industry. Um, so I'm really excited for that. And again, it will make me more informed about my future career choice. And lastly, I want to talk about the extracurricular opportunities through that Monash office. So I am currently a peer mentor student ambassador and global ambassador 
And the photo on the top left here is when I provided assistance for parents and potential future students on open day last year. And the photo on the bottom right is when I organized a international student event during exam period. And this experience is like a snapshot of the real workplace because skills like event organization, communication and problem solving will become handy in whatever future position that I take on. And being in such um, a relatively smaller but also more exclusive campus means a greater sense of belonging and I have made some of my best friends at Parkville and again we also have free food events sometimes and that's like the donut that we got just the week before last week and that's another bonus point for the campus life so overall the two years and Monash Farmside have probably been the most challenging but the best two years of my schooling and um, maybe I'll get to see some of um, some of the participants today in the near future on campus. And thank you. Fabulous. Thanks, Jessica. I did have some of those delicious donuts um, the other week. Uh, it sounds like you're in the right course. It sounds like you've certainly found your way. Um, are you going to do that elective, uh, the industry one? Yes, I am currently yeah. doing that right now. And I oh. am yeah, collaboration with Rationale, actually. Oh, you're just... with Rationale. Oh, amazing. Amazing. That's going to be fun. Cool, thank you. Um, all right, and next up we have Astra. Hi, Astra, who's in the double degree of um, pharmaceutical science and engineering. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Astra, and I am a current fourth year student in the Bachelor of Chemical Engineering and Pharmaceutical Science. Very long name to say. <laughs> um, so one of the reasons why I chose this degree was I had a passion for chemistry and food science. So the units that I did in high school was chemistry, biology, food studies, um, English, maths, and um, specialist maths. Um, and I really wanted to see how I could apply that interest into real life. Um, I had a look around to see which courses I could potentially go into. And I was drawn towards the pharmaceutical science degree because of how diverse and the different kind of um, pathways that you could go into. And I actually kind of stumbled upon the double degree as well a week before VTAC applications closed. So that was a great kind of um, opportunity on my end. And turns out the double degree also has a lot of alumni and pathways into the food industry, which is industry that I would like to go into. Um, so one of the things that I really enjoyed about this degree so far is, as uh, Jessica mentioned before, the hands-on experience that you actually get from the three-year pharmaceutical science degree. So with the double degree, it is a bit different. So you do alternate between Parkville and Clayton. So our first and third year are at Parkville, but those two years were filled with lab activities, being able to make creams, tablets, um, kind of be doing industry projects as well. I also had the same um, rationale project that Jessica had as well um, when I did the uh, unit last year, and that turned out to be quite an amazing experience. Uh, we actually uh, outputted a product at the end that they were quite happy with, despite the many different struggles that we went through, uh, so that was really good. And also the rich connection and alumni to alumni and industry that the course actually offers, given how small our um, campus and cohort is. So we are quite tight knit and we do keep in contact with a lot of our alumni industry contacts to actually provide um, industry employments to our graduates. And I definitely really enjoy the supportive community that we have at Parkville, given that we are quite a small campus that is quite far away from the major Clayton and Caulfield campuses that Monash has. So one of the few practical experiences that I have had the opportunity of actually participating in in the part from the um, science degree was actually uh, mostly in the labs doing titrations, product synthesis, making creams, tablets, and also had the opportunity to go on placement at a food company and uh, in my placement, I actually did um, quality control uh, and research and development of new products and testing of food products before they went out into industry. 
And a few of the highlights was definitely being able to learn how to make and develop formulations in our third year and also getting hands-on experience on our tablet machine, which is named Shrek because it is green and huge. And also being able to experience both Parkville and Clayton campus, which is definitely, um, I'd say, a major selling point of the double degree because not a lot of different other degrees actually um, allow you to go between Parkville and Clayton. Mm. Um, But yeah, that's definitely one of the major kind of uh, upbringings that I've seen so far with my degree. And given I'm four years into this degree now, I've definitely not um, regretted a single choice going into this degree so far. Terrific. Thanks, Astra. I'm glad you found it at the last minute. <laughs> That's a really good option. I've just realised that my um, my video is not working. Can you all actually see me? No, I think it's gone off sometime. It was on before? Oh. It was on before, yeah. Okay, all right. Off. Yeah. I don't know what's happened there, everyone. Uh, I will try and fix it. So um, thank you, Astra, Rena, and Jessica. Um, and what we'll do now is go into questions your questions so we'd like to um you know I'll answer some and our our students will answer others um one question is will we have access to a recording of this afterwards yes so we have a YouTube channel so pharmacy farm YouTube channel where we put all our videos so you'll be able to find it there um next question what's the difference between pharmaceutical science pharmacology and biochemistry in the direction of career pathway oh I'm going to hand that one over to a student Who wants to pick that one up? The difference between pharmaceutical science, pharmacology and biochemistry in the direction of career, a career pathway. Uh, I could probably pick that one up to help answer. Thanks, Astra. Yeah. Um, So that's actually one of the most common questions that we get um, at Open Day as well. So there is quite a difference between pharmaceutical science, pharmacology and biochemistry. So pharmaceutical science is more focused on... Um, the creation of new drug compounds and molecules, but that doesn't limit you into just working with drug molecules. You can also work in the formulation industry, the food industry, cosmetics industry, uh, paint, surface coatings, definitely a different, um, a lot of different industries. Whereas pharmacology, uh, uh, to correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, more focused on kind of the medicinal kind of area that relates a lot with um, pharmacy and so kind of going into that direction, whereas biochemistry is more science related and is more geared toward kind of medicinal chemistry kind of side of our degree as well. So it is a little, little different, but they do have their similarities that come with them. I think that's an excellent explanation, Astra. Jessica, do you you have anything to add, or that was that was quite a good answer? Um, I think within our degree, because um, we do have like different units compared to the double degrees, so we do actually do pharmacology and biochemistry in the first two years of our degrees. So you get to experience that. But pharmaceutical science is just more in like a more like a broader term. So you do encompass both pharmacology and biochemistry in our degree. Yeah. Terrific. Thank you both. And thanks, Chichi, for your question. Uh, next question is, what kind of jobs uh, starting sal- salaries for pharmacists? Um, yeah, so we talked about careers throughout the presentation. Um, hopefully um, you listen to that. So quite broad. So, uh, you know, there's community pharmacy and hospital pharmacy. Um, and also you're looking at, you know, p- uh, public health care teams and in government. There's lots of opportunities um, to work um salaries i think start maybe i'm going to guess in australia around 70 or eighty thousand dollars a year and and go up from there depending on your level of experience so um i believe it is around there but um yeah feel free to google that one as well (laughs) i know seek has some good information there um so the next question, I noticed there were no mention of internship opportunities on the previous slide. Is this something that is not part of the courses offered? Ruby, I'm not sure which course you're referring to, but uh, both courses, both PharmSci and Pharmacy have placements uh, and internships. So that's definitely a part of our of the experiential learning. Um, and with pharmacy in the master's program, we're doing the intern training program, which is a huge supervised practice. Um, and 
in third and fourth year, you've got your placements as well. But they do start from first year with pharmacy um, and farm sci, you have internships uh, as part of the degree as well. Um, do either of you want to talk a little bit about your placements or internships? Do Astra, Rena, or Jessica? Rena, yep. Sure. Um, so my internship in first year, um, we get uh, like a one day community pharmacy um, placement, but it's just mostly observation. Um, and then in second year, you get a one week community pharmacy placement. Um, that one, you do get a little bit more um, hands on stuff, but it is mainly um, observation as well. And then in third year, I believe we have a two week hospital and also a two week community placement. And then in fourth year, um, the duration of the placement increases again. Um, so you do get experience in both community and hospital um, throughout your degree. Mm, terrific, thank you. Thanks, Rena. Um, go on to another question. Um, uh, let's see. Is pharmaceutical science also a pathway for medicine? Um, the answer is no. So it's the Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours that is a pathway for medicine. So check out the uh, Medicine Pathway webpage and they'll give you all the details there. What is the advantage of doing masters if you could become a pharmacist after your B pharmacy? So you actually can't. So I, I maybe I didn't explain that very well. Um, so to become a registered pharmacist in Australia, um, you need five years be, behind you. So you need your bachelor's degree and the intern training program. Monash is offering you the intern training program, which is the supervised training where you are paid uh, as part of your master's degree. Uh, and in, ad in addition to that, you also study in um, doing some other studies sort of to help give you more knowledge and you know prepare you more for your exams. So if you do a Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours, then you do need to do the intern training program either with Monash in the masters or somewhere else. So there are um, like a pharmacy bodies that, that do offer it. Um, so you do pay for it uh, to, to complete it with them. And then that's pre-registration and then you sit your exam and you become registered. Okay. Um, oh, where did that question go? Can I transfer to Parkville after spending two years in Malaysia? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, so we do offer the Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours in Malaysia and you want to be transferring in your uh, first or second year um, for the Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours. And if you want to go into the double degree, uh, you have up to third year and you'll be contacted. You need to do that by sort of September, October. Okay, to come in the next year. Uh, let's see, can I, can you do masters without doing honours? Yes, you can. So our masters uh, of pharmaceutical science is a coursework masters. So, which means it's not a, because you have research masters as well. And in a research masters, you do need to have an honours year to then progress to research in your masters and then a PhD. Um, so, Short answer there is this applies for, for us only, for PharmSci. Um, next question, what is involved in the admission process for pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences at Monash, e.g. VTAC, interview, consideration of ATAR? Okay, I did, I did look over, the, um, cover the entry requirements. So you do need to apply through VTAC. Uh, there is no interview. And we do look at your ATAR and your prerequisites as well. Um, a question here from Faith. I'm not 100% sure this is the industry for me. What things can I do to find out? And which of the two degrees would you recommend for an all-rounder experience? I'm going to hand this over to the students because they've been in your shoes uh, in deciding. Um, and some have already spoken about that thinking process. But um, I'll put it out to Astra, Rena and Jessica, whoever wants to reply. So, yeah, so the question is, so if they're not sure, um, which of the two degrees would you recommend for an all-rounder experience? And look, to be honest, I think the outcome for both is quite different. I mean, um, but I'll, I'll leave, let Astra talk. He was going to talk. Yep. Yeah. So um, I was just going to say, I was actually in 
the exact same position as you before when I started um, choosing my course because I wasn't sure if I want to do like food science or if I want to do just pharmaceutical science, if I want to do engineering. Um, but if you were looking for an all-rounder experience, in my perspective, pharmaceutical science is a good kind of starting ground because it is similar to a science degree, but it is more kind of focused on the pharmaceutical science aspect. So you get you get hands-on training and you get exposed to, as I mentioned before, the drug discovery pipelines, which uh, consists of the drug discovery biology, medicinal chemistry, and formulation science. And throughout your course, you'll actually be given opportunities to look into how the drug develops from just a starting molecule up until it's formulated into a tablet cream form that you can actually administer to patients. And in third year, you actually also get a unit where you learn about the process in which these drugs get approved for market. And I think if you were looking for like an rounder experience in kind of that area for a pharmaceutical science degree, is a good way to go as well. Um, but definitely look out for um, the course guides that Monash gives out as well. That could give you a, a lot more information as well if you were still deciding on which industry to go into. That's a great response, Astra. Thank you. Hopefully that answered your question, Faith. Um, another question here, how many hours uh, oh, sorry, I just also realised the time. It is past seven if you need to go. Um, there are quite a few questions here. We, we will continue um, to answer them if you want to stick around. How many hours outside of class time do students usually study for this course? Um, that's one of the students. Um, so I'd probably say for me, I think it depends on the person, but I probably study um, maybe like four hours, two to four hours per subject um, outside of class time. Um, and I still do have like time to have a part-time job in a pharmacy and I usually work two days a week. So I think it kind of also depends on how you're able to manage your time. Mm, uh, thanks, thanks, Rena. That is a really good point, how to manage your time. And we, there is, um, this is where the peer mentor comes in really helpful. You can ask them how they manage their time or you can ask your, um, your peers in your classes, how do you manage your time if you, it's something that you struggle with? Because we don't all manage time well, um, but it sounds like you do it really well, Rena. So well done. Yeah, so I think um, generally, I think study, yeah, what is it like 32 to 56 hours a week um, is sort of the what you're looking at for study time. And that does include in class time as well as outside class. Um, are any subjects taken at the Clayton campus? So no, they're not. Not um, So pharmacy and pharmaceutical science all taught at Parkville. Um, engineering is, is what is taught at the Clayton campus if you're in that double degree. Um, question here, uh, I reckon for Astra, uh, is pharmaceutical science similar to biomedical engineering? Um, okay, I'll try my best to get to this <laughs> question. So um, there is a misconception with chemical engineering because um, people think, oh, the name chemical and chemical engineering means um, chemistry, but we actually don't have a lot of hands-on um, in the labs with chemical engineering. Um, that's why if you were to take a straight engineering, like chemical engineering course, there is a elective in first year to do chemistry. So that is similar to us doing the double degree with pharmaceutical science and chemical engineering. With biomedical um, engineering, it's more looking towards creating kind of um, biomedical devices such as like heart um, monitors, heart transplants, and um, kind of solving those kind of real world problems that relate to health medicinal uh, medicines by using technology and engineering to kind of solve those problems. So it is um, a little similar, but not the same. Yeah. Mm, that is really complex, isn't it? Yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks, Estra. Uh, hopefully that's answered your question. Um, 
Uh, another question here. If I study first year pharmacy at an interstate uni such as UQ, can I transfer to Monash in second year? And if yes, is it easy to do so? Um, so yes, you can. Uh, you can, but you'll have to start from first year because we don't grant you any credit, even though you were studying pharmacy at a different university. So you're going to come into first the first year. Um, yeah. So short answer, yes, but um, with no credit. And it's just uh, an application through VTAC again, and you upload all your documents. Um, and so what we're looking at is not really your ATAR score, but your most recent study. So if you're in your first year at um, UQ, you got a 70% average, um, then, and you've met all the other requirements of high level maths and chemistry, which I assume they would have at UQ, um, then yes, you would be um, offered a place. Um, next question, what are the majors in pharmaceutical science? Jessica, do you want to? Uh, yeah, sure. So for the first two years of, of our degrees, we actually don't have any difference. So everyone's doing the same degrees, basically. Um, so it's the physiology and the chemistry that you need for the basis, like that going to your third year study. But in your third year, you do get to choose your elective unit. So you go into either of the three areas. So it's formulation science, drug discovery biology, or medicinal chemistry. And then people just have different combinations of each. So um, you do get a bit of a freedom in third year, but in the first two years, everyone's doing the same thing. Terrific. Thanks, Jessica. Um, what else? The final exam for pharmacy registration sounds stressful. What happens if you fail? It would be a terrible after five years of study. That is actually true. Um, I don't know if I know the answer to that. I think you can retake it. Uh, Rena, do you know? Um, from what I've heard, I think you can retake it every six months or every year, I believe. But um, yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Do, do you know, um, have you heard of people failing, Rena? Um, I've heard of a few, but I feel like a lot of people um, pass it. Um, yeah, I think there's like a few components as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I think if you are, if you do fail, I think you'd probably know where you failed and you could sort of get that uh, extra assistance, you know, from your, you know, your teachers at Monash. Um, yeah, other students, I think you'd get that support to sort of to get you over the line for sure. Yeah. Is there a pathway and requirements of getting into medicine degree via pharmacology? Oh, I don't know, but you can do the Bachelor of Pharmacy honours as a pathway. Um, when we don't offer a, a Bachelor of Pharmacology per se. Uh, can I enroll in can I enroll in pharmacy first and then switch to the Master of Pharmacy in year two? Um, so into the double degree? Um, yes, you can. You can go from the bachelor's degree into the um, in the single into the, into the double. That is definitely an option. How many first year pharmacy places are available in 2024? Ah, okay. So we don't really have a cap on numbers. I mean, we are a little bit limited by our size. Um, we have, yeah. So, I mean, to give you an idea this year for pharmacy, we admitted about, uh, I think 370 new students. And for pharmaceutical science, we had about um, 300 new students come in. So we, there's no, sort of advertised cap. So I wouldn't worry about places. If you meet the requirements, chances are you're going to get offered a place. Uh, another question, is hospital pharmacy competitive? Um, it can be, um, but you know, luckily in, in Victoria, uh, we have lots of hospitals uh, and uh, there are lots of opportunities for you. So you saw the, uh, I don't, you might not have seen the slide, but uh, 80 um, of the 199 master's students uh, who are doing an internship this year, got a place at a hospital. So that's quite high. Another question, will biomed learn, learning, sorry, will biomed learn more broader? Oh, is studying biomed broader than pharmaceutical science? Can we have more career pathways after graduation? 
of master. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess with biomed, you know, that really is more, I guess, a medicine question. The medicine faculty at Monash teaches that. Um, I think in both areas, uh, career options are really broad. So our career pathways improved with a master's degree, hands down. Um, you know, I mean, a master's is a higher qualification. It means that you're learning, you're building on the learning that you got in your bachelor's degree, okay? So you're not sort of regurgitating the same things. You are adding to your body of knowledge. So you're becoming a master uh, in, in an area of study. Um, but, you know, look, for some people, they don't need it. They do well without it. Like, it really is up to you. There's a thank you there, so thank you for that. Um, Overseas Exchange for Pharmaceutical Science. Uh, we're currently working uh, with the academics to create some of those programs. We did have some things in the pipeline and then COVID hit and that kind of all fell by the wayside. So um, we are looking to build opportunities for pharmaceutical science students for sure. Sorry, just to add to the Overseas Exchange programs. Um, yeah. One of my friend who went to Japan just during the summer holiday to do a placement or like an exchange program there, but I I don't think it's a like specific to our degree, but you can definitely apply to those opportunities as a farm slash student. Okay, so they they didn't get credit for it, or they did get credit for the? I don't think they would have got credit. Yeah, no, but it's just like a like a better experience. like an, a bonus yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Terrific. Yeah, because you do get like a four week winter break, uh, and obviously the summer break is quite long it's about three months so you, there are yeah you could definitely do something like that uh could you talk about the ATARs needed for different major again okay so the ATARs you can find all that information on our website so each degree uh so it's not so it's not really the major um it's the degree that, that the ATAR applies to um and with pharmacy or pharmaceutical science you're looking at the 80s and 90s okay but that is all on the study.1ash webpage um, what is an honours degree? What will we learn? So an honours year essentially um, is a research year. Okay, so you do a, a re research thesis. Um, have any of you started your honours year? I don't think you have. No. Um, yeah, so you're writing a research paper. Some people love research. They love get you know, delve, you know, creating a topic. So you create a topic with a supervisor and you do lots of research and you go away and research and write up a paper, you submit it. So it is supervised. Um, and it's, yeah, unlike coursework, we sort of attend in a class and you're doing some work. This is um, a lot of um, self-time and researching. So honours, by the way, it's um, when you do honours, you're adding to a body of knowledge. So when you're creating a topic to research, uh, it needs to be quite an innovative one. So you can come up with that yourself or in conjunction uh, with a supervisor. If you, uh, the question is, if you were taking a year off and haven't got into a course yet, what are your entry options? Um, you've taken a year up, like a gap year, you can take a gap. Oh, so I'm not sure if you are in year 12, um, you can still apply and def and get offered a course, you know, uh, a place in a course, and then you can defer for a year. So that is an option. Um, trying to understand your question if you're taking a year off. Yeah, if you haven't applied for anything through VTAC, you do need to then go and create a VTAC application and apply. Um, oh, lots of questions around uh, this. One, what are the career pathway? I might just, I think there's a couple more and then we can finish up. Uh, what are the career pathway differences for the double degree of farm and engineering and advanced honours? Well, I mean, we do have, yeah. Did you want to respond, Astra? Yeah, I could yeah. take the um, engineering part. I think Jessica could yeah. talk a bit about the advanced honors part. So it's essentially kind of the the same pathway because um, we are doing the same degree coming out with two different degrees. So with the double degree, you're coming out with both the chemical engineering and the pharmaceutical science degree. So you are qualified as both a pharmaceutical scientist and a chemical engineer. With the chemical engineering degree, it's more based towards kind of um, production, design, engineering, kind of reactions, and kind of if you look at the beverage company, that's a big company that 
uh, takes in chemical engineering graduates um, to design kind of process flows and production lines and all of that. And um, Jessica can mention a bit about the- um, Thanks, Astra. Yeah. That was great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so for the advanced honours, if people choose to do an honours year, they like maybe like a lot of the times they would choose to do a PhD. So they're going to research about, you know, mRNA vaccines or like how to treat malaria. But um, also just like an example, the placement that's offered by ESOP to um, like just us, like the pharmaceutical science students, it's more about formulation and quality control. But for the double degree students, they do offer like packaging and just the designing of all of that. So they do have a bit of difference. Yeah. Mm. And you get the extended placement as well. Uh, yes, for the yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it was, um, I wrote it, uh, it's double anyway. It's double what you would get in the um, the three year. Yeah. Um, uh, so Astra, were you typing an answer? Yes. So we've already answered, I think, bioengineering and biochemical engineering. Did you want to talk to it or? Um, I was just going to say this might be a question better for the, the engineering faculty, um, yeah, but from okay. my knowledge, the only engineering that we offer is um, biomedical engineering, and I think we've just rebranded the chemical engineering faculty to the chemical and biological engineering faculty, so okay. um, I think there is uh, projects in our final year that go into kind of looking to like food waste and engineering how to better tackle with food waste and bring in bacteria to break those down and all that as well. So I think that might be related a bit to bioengineering. Not too sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe it is a question for engineering. Thank you for trying to answer that and yeah. answering that well. Um, I think that's it, everyone. Thank you so much for those who, who stuck around. Uh, a very big thank you to my fabulous students. So Rena, Astra and Jessica, you are amazing. Um, and sorry for the hiccups. And I don't know why you can't now see me. My camera's broken or I've broken it. Um, but yeah. Oh, actually, sorry. I wanted to show you one more thing. I should have shown it earlier. But uh, anyway, if anyone's still around. Um, we do have chemistry revision lectures uh, in the April school holidays. So uh, maybe take a photo um, of that if you'd like. Uh, so you can jump onto that website and register for chemistry revision uh, for in the April school holidays. And then here's our um, contact information if you want to send me an email or you can follow us on TikTok of course uh, or any of the other socials and um, for scholarships I didn't really mention them but Monash has many like we offered 400 different types of scholarships so the best way to look at that is to go to the website um, complete the filter and it'll tell you what you're eligible for. A lot of the merit scholarships you don't actually apply for, they are based on your ATAR and we will reach out to you, but there are some that you can apply for. Okay. Um, great. Well, that concludes our session. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, we hope to see you at Parkville one day. See you. Good night.